Dear lovebirds, we are <laughs> playing the game called Death Trick Double Blind today, developed by Misty Mountain Studio and published by Neon Doctrine. And on Steam, they are introducing their game with the star magician of Morgan's Traveling Circus is missing. But the show must go on. In this, this non-linear detective visual novel, unravel the mystery from two different perspectives as you learn the va varying stories of an entire circus of performers, each with their own lives and their own secrets. The text are choose your own adventure strategy. And... Uh, I want to I wanna show you something before we're starting, though. Look at this small detail. <laughs> it's actually a knife. We're stabbing. We're stabbing the game. It's actually super interesting to see. Just, I like these small details already. All right, just down now. Let's start a new game and see what the story is about. Morgan's Traveling Circus is coming to Tolji. Puppets, acrobatics, fire dancing. The amazing Hattie. <laughs> it's delayed though, new date to be announced. Wrestling match on television. A traveling circus. I was actually only once in a circus and I was little. Hmm. That's it. I need to show him this letter. Hi, this is Detective Jones from Jones Investigative Services. How can I help you, Jacqueline? But you can call me Jackie. <laughs> I feel like I'm, we're watching a bit of a trailer here. Double blind when you create a character in Dragon's Dogma with both eyes closed. <laughs> yeah, kind of true. That's very, very true. The battle is ridiculously difficult. I knew it was going to be tough, but I'd forgotten exactly how stupid it is. You got this, though, Pan. It sounds just insanely hard. All right, and this is it. I have to make it work. Moby says, come in. Mr. Morgan. Oh, there is a magician talking here. An older gentleman sits behind the desk. He's so engrossed in his documents that he didn't even look up when I came in. Mr. Jones, I've been expecting. He stops mid-sentence after glancing up from the desk. Uh-huh. So there's a timer here. I don't know what this means, AP. Probably our actions, action points maybe. And we have five of five right now. And then you can do this and see probably some stats we don't have yet. My apologies, I wasn't expecting other visitors. Moses Morgan is the owner of Morgan's Traveling Circus. Oh, okay. Some uh, interesting uh, facts here. I really like the sticker style here. I like that a lot. All right, uh, the killer was a clown. <laughs> it could have been everyone else, but but a clown. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe there is not even a clown. It seems like you have me at a disadvantage. Uh, disadvantage, miss. I thought that knock was a bit alert at <laughs> first. <laughs> me too, to be honest. I looked up the chat, but uh, no, it was not. <laughs> it was very realistic. Uh, Jacqueline, but you can just call me Jackie. All right, Miss Jackie. Is there anything I can do for you? Sometimes conversations can feel like a battle and you need all the weapons in your arsenal. Actually, I like that idea, just like in Disco Elysium. A good conversationalist can wield every skill and weapon in their collection to accomplish any task. Ask questions, give answers, present evidence, spread gossip. Well, that's not my type of... of uh, I, 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 let's say it this way I wouldn't I wouldn't spread gossip I actually don't like that because clowns are scary they are I also don't like clowns at all I don't I don't know who thinks like I don't know clowns are they're always looking so sad to me and then they're acting so weird no I don't think they're funny this is your collection everything you need for a conversation can be found here separated into three categories information items and people you can click these tabs on the top or press lb and rb to switch between categories well i'm, I'm playing with a mouse and keyboard though all right then um from there choose an item and click the check mark button or press x on controller to present that topic and advance the conversation Later, you will be able to present everything in your collection to anyone you want. But for now, focus on answering the other party's questions and keeping the conversation flowing. Oh God, I'm gonna be a horrible detective. 
<laughs> Station and Circus about Jackie, the mind reading act. And we have different kind of uh, items here. It's a letter from Hattie, silver handgun. And uh, this is probably our, our, our not our lock, but uh, our poker deck. <laughs> this is Morgan as the owner of Morgan's Traveling Circus. So there are uh, quite a few characters here. Letter from Hattie. Ah, oh, we can also read this one. Jay, something's going on in the circus. I need to watch out. If something happens to me and Tolgi, please go take my place. I can't say more right now, but please, the show has to go on. The amazing Hattie. And there is a handgun, silver handgun, a small pistol with a custom silver plated handle. It's small enough to be strapped to someone's thigh and hinder and hidden under a long coat or a dress. Damn. Circus, the situation. Since the disappearance of magician, the amazing Hattie, Morgan's traveling circus has been put under the spotlight as newspapers are speculating on the mystery and customers are demanding ticket refunds, which is understandable. Uh, about Jackie. I, Jackie, am a magician. A new one, freshly returned from my apprenticeship in Europe and the mind acting. My signature trick is a telepathy act. People often ask if it's real or fake. Well, if I can give the right answers, doesn't matter if they come from my mystical powers or just good old human trickery. Yeah, well, most of the time it's the last one. <laughs> They're just uh, very good with that. All right. Um, uh, I can, oh, you can also say L for the log. Oh, this is the whole log here. Interesting. I have to make it more. All right, this is it. Come in. Oh, this was our. Oh, okay, never mind. Oh, okay, never mind. This is our log, so you can always read that one. Actually, the right question to ask is: Is there anything I can do for you? Excuse me. You are circus and in a, is in a tough spot. He narrows his eyes but decides not to speak. Instead, he leans back into his chair and crosses his arms, waiting for me to continue. I must be careful here. Oh shoot, what am I gonna say? Your star performer has been missing for a week. People are talking, the papers are speculating and your customers are protesting. What are you saying to that? You saw your tickets on the promise of seeing the amazing Hattie, the greatest female magician of a generation, but nobody has seen her perform even a single trick. It's the weekend and the big show is coming up. If she doesn't show up, he cuts me off his sharp gaze, piercing my soul. Miss Jackie, why are you here? Well, <laughs> can I talk about the silver handgun? I mean, this is looking like a gun, right? Yeah, let's talk about the handgun. What's the meaning of this? Or am I too fast with that? If you're trying to threaten me, I'm afraid you need to do better than that. Oh, I didn't want to threaten you. It's probably not the best time to bring this out. But also, he's amazingly calm in the face of something that could kill him. That's a bit sus, so. Now, unless you have something to discuss, I'm afraid I'll, uh, I'll have to ask you to leave. Actually, I do have something to say. Okay, what about the letter? I received this letter a few days ago. I came as soon as I could. Jay... Something's going on in the circus. Oh, we, we already read this one. I can't say more right now, but please. The show has to go on. The amazing Hattie. He pours with a letter. Browse furrowed. A letter from Hattie. The amazing Hattie was the star magician of Morgan's traveling circus until she disappeared on September, uh, September 15th. Oh, we're in the year 1952. That is uh, this Monday. What? What is she talking about? Something going on in the circus. So. Nothing's going on in my circus. If anything was happening, I'd surely know about it. Don't, don't you think? I. He looks shaken for a moment, but quickly collects himself. Sorry, that's another matter entirely, which I'm sure we will, we will discuss. But first of all, why would she send this letter to you, Miss Jackie? Oh, that is a good question. Now we get this entry here to, uh, to Hattie. Um, maybe talk about Hattie a bit. Well, because I'm a magician too. You said your name was Jackie. Never heard of a magician with that name. 
Do you know every magician in the country? I don't think so. More or less, we don't get a lot of female magicians. I'd have heard about you by now, and that mask on your face is practically asking for gossip. Small circle, huh? I get it. The Europeans are the same way. So you're European? But your accent... It's American, yes. I was born and raised in the States, but I went to France with my mentor to study magic. It was, what, five, six years ago? Oh God, I was, I was just a stupid girl who wanted to learn magic. I mean, I'm still stupid. I'm still a stupid girl, but at least I know how to do magic. Anyways, uh, where was I? Ah, yes. Um, it was right after the war ended. The economy wasn't great, as you can imagine. I stuck with it until I completed my apprenticeship, but then the circus shut down too. My family missed me and wanted me to, yeah, wanted me home. So here I am. I promise you, I am au fait with the everything magic. I'm a professional. So is that how you and Hattie knew each other? Ah, uh, you know, we magicians need to stick together. Fair enough. Is that why you, why she asked you to be here? To do her understudy of sorts? Well, that's one possible explanation. Or maybe she thought I could help her figure something out. This might have something to do with a particular skill of mine. The mind reading act. That is a skill, I think. <laughs> She contacted me because I have a particular set of skills. Well, one skill, but it can help me figure out what happened. Mind reading or mind reading act. If you're good enough, there isn't a difference. So what? You close your eyes and say a spell and then you can tell me where Hattie is? <laughs> Welcome back, Pan. Uh, the bot made the stream ping very late on Discord. Yeah, sometimes this is happening. I cannot influence that, unfortunately, since it's not my bot. Um, so sometimes, yeah. Bot also needs some sleep, too. <laughs> That's true. I'm a mind reader, not a physic. I can all. No, psychic, right? I can only tell you where she is if you know where she is. Do you? Try it. You want me to try it on you? You have my permission? Okay, here goes nothing. Well, I'm trying, but your energy is resisting me. <laughs> right. I think I'm going to need a stronger connection. Can you give me your hands? He silently lays both of his arms on the table. I grab his wrists. His eyes are calm, but pure, pure steady. His pure to steady. Now say, Abra Kadabra. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> you need to come up with something better than that. See? Your energy resisting. I can't believe I'm going along with this. Fine. Abra Kadabra. All right, all right. Now I'm just going to ask you a very simple question. You don't have to say the answer because I'll hear your thoughts. Sounds good? Go ahead. Are you sure? I can control my powers. If there's anything you don't want me to know, don't think about it. <laughs> well, actually, now that I said it, you will be thinking really hard about them. Exactly, Chad. Don't think about an elephant. <laughs> and now you're imagining an elephant. <laughs> I'm also a magician now. I've stirred down the barrel of a rifle and the jaws of a tiger. I can handle a little magic act. All right, if you're sure. Hmm, I wonder if you can actually do that. I'm going to have some... Ooh, I have no idea how to pronounce that. Olomokesirechki? Oh god, I'm so sorry, Teddy, I can't say that. For me, I don't know how to say it in English. Um, I guess I need to Google this. What kind of food is that? It sounds good, though. Fancy. <laughs> I don't think I ever had that. It's home-cooked food in our county in kind of cheese that smells really, really bad. Is that a special kind of cheese which is only sold in your country? I wonder. It sounds good though. I love home cooked meal. That's always so nice. I'm preferring this way more than going into a restaurant to be honest. It's really really nice. Here it comes. Your magician Harry. How did she die? Uh huh. He's so shocked now. His hands in my palms jerk slightly. Guess he caught himself before he pulled back altogether. 
But it's too late. In this initial surprise, he, his eyes flicked to my chest. These are the micro uh, movements of your body, of your gesture. Just, uh, yeah, telling the truth, basically. You said it right. Oh, wow, Teddy. I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> when it's unwrapped, it stinks everywhere. Yeah, that's happening with the old cheese. I, I wonder if you, yeah, if that's a very special kind of cheese, you can get only, uh, yeah, over at your place. Enjoy your food, yeah? Sounds amazing. I love cheese. Something through the heart. A bullet. The corner of his mouth twitches. No, not a bullet. A knife. His face turns serious. How? Through mind reading, of course. Don't give me that. I mean, mysterious disappearance. Come on. Are you trying to say this is just a wild guess? But what about the knife? Well, a magician never reveals her tricks. Are you? Are you a magician? Wait a minute. Let me just get this straight. So you are a magician and apparently had to suspect that something was off in my circus and ask you to come here if something happened to her? And then she disappeared. So, you came here and somehow figured out that she was killed. Told ya. Mind reading. <laughs> somehow, I'm still not convinced about that. When did Hattie... Mm, when did you find out Hattie was dead? Monday night. When did you receive her letter? A few days ago, Wednesday. I think I came as soon as I got it. He takes a deep breath. This means she's not dead. I received a letter from a dead person. She knew she was going to die. Oh, hmm. Oh, Chad, what could it be then? I received a letter from a dead person. She's not dead. She knew she was going to die. Maybe it's this one. This means she knew she was going to die. Or at least that she was in danger. Otherwise you won't write this kind of letter, right? As hard as it is to believe, you're right. But how is that even possible? Why didn't she do anything? Hello, dear Manu. Bad detective feature of the stream. Within minutes, the detective knew exactly what the murder weapon was. <laughs> it was a briefcase buttons. Thank you, Marat. I like this one. It fits very well to today's stream. Thank you very much. <laughs> nice to see you, Marat. Welcome to, to the stream. Hope you had a nice Sunday. And hi, dear Simpinski. Murder, she wrote. Hmm, do I know this song? Hi, dear Simpinski. Welcome to the stream. Hope you also have had a nice Sunday or having a nice Sunday. Ah, His lips quiver. I can see the doubt and the disbelief on his usually impassive face. I feel bad for him, but can I truly rule out that he is uh, the culprit? Mm, we need to figure this out, yeah? Ah. I clear my throat, and if that woke him up from, from a dream, he sits upright, his face returning to its normal, stoic nature. So, the show is coming up, and I think there is a reason Hattie called me to take her place. We have a great opportunity here. I'm afraid. I don't quite understand. I'm sure you are a great magician, but at this point, I'm afraid no replacement can meet the audience's expectations. Well, good thing I'm not here to replace her then. I'm here to become her. Huh? Well, let's talk about the plan. What plan? How many people know about the truth of Hattie's disappearance? For now, only my crew and the police. What did the police say about it? Does any everyone in the circus know? Are you sure there's no one else? Hmm. You know, I tried to fit my jokes. Yeah, <laughs> that's very, very true. I see the gentleman's been thinking a lot. Yeah, uh, he might be the culprit. So he might be uh, the person maybe who killed Hattie. What did the police say about it? I'm curious. You called the police? Why aren't they involved? What did they say? Well, you know them. If she, if the news got out of that famous person was killed under their watch, to bring down a whole mass of trouble in their heads. 
When we asked, they were all too happy to make the to take the body away discreetly and pretend nothing happened. Good. Well, that's that's good, I guess. Um, I mean, obviously it's not good that the Talgi polis are useless, but it's good for the plan. Is Talgi really existing? Is that a city? Just uh, just try to not understand, but maybe it's even it, maybe it's even a real city. Today I tried to find a joke which, uh, if it's to detective game, makes you laugh. But at first I had no clue. <laughs> but uh, you found a really good one. Oh, you had no clue. Oh my goodness. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Would you please just get to the point? Well, let's say, hypothetically, what if Hattie wasn't dead after all? I can pinpoint the exact moment his face switches from confusion to understanding. You. You are going to be Hattie. Let's say the reason for her disappearance is that her face got injured in a practice incident. And now she has to wear a mask to cover up her wounds. You had this all planned out from the beginning, didn't you? Well, I am the magician. Or I am the magician. Um, I'm not gonna lie. Having had to come back at least until we get the big shows out of the way would certainly solve a lot of my problems just right now. As you pointed out, our circus is currently in a bit of a delicate position. But I cannot in good con... Cons... Is it called conscience? Conscience? Consci conscience? Agree to this plan of your... For me, it's conscience. <laughs> what? Sorry. What? Why? Come on, don't tell me you are sticking to some bullcrap about not lying to the audience or something. In case you haven't noticed, deception is kind of the nature of our trait. No, no, no. Well, that's not ideal, but I don't think it's breaking any non-existent code of ethics or anything. Then why in the world would you say no? Do you enjoy being grilled by the press and customers every damn day? He crosses his arms. I don't know if this has secured to you, Miss Jackie, but the killer is still out there. This crazy plan of yours will surely draw their attention and therefore put you in mortal danger. You're worried about me. Aw, that's real sweet, but I can't take care of myself. You don't understand. I will not have another death happen in my circus. Trust me, nothing is going to happen. How can you be so sure? Think about it. Whoever killed her was definitely counting on her to get out of the way for something, so my parents is going to put a wrench in their plan. If it were you, what would you do? I have no idea. Exactly. You'd panic. Scramble to come up with something new, right? That's when you make mistakes. A magician should never do a trick when you think someone's seen through it. So you want to... What? Talk to everyone, see what their reaction is. How's that going to help? Mind reader here, remember? I'm not some detective with a magnifying glass concerned about footprints or crime scenes. I deal with matters of the heart. Whoever did this must have a reason. But why? What was their relationship with Hattie? Do they feel guilty? Proud? Or even relieved? One may keep the evidence of their crime hidden. But their heart will always remember what their mind has tried to forget. So, if I ask them about Hattie, feelings will emerge. And I think some interesting things might come up. Inquire about Hattie. What could be the killer's real motive? The first step to answering that is to untangle each circus member's relationship with the victim. I need to talk to everyone in the circus and inquire about Hattie. Hmm... He's trying to manipulate your thinking. Don't trust him. In a game like this, I cannot trust anyone. <laughs> it's always insanely hard. And I hope there's going to be a very big twist here. Are you absolutely sure about this? I am fully aware of the risk. Besides, who am I to throw away away someone's dying wish? Not even yours. Maybe not even myself here, you know? Because I am also a bit sus. Like, I'm coming over and I, I just want to take over uh, Hattie's job here. That's also a bit sus, right? Are you sure you're not the matter? <laughs> I'm actually not. Especially not yourself. <laughs> okay, Epsi. <laughs> the show must go on. Plus, if, or more realistically, 
when the killer decides to come out, I have plenty of tricks up my sleeve to deal with them. All right, we have one more action left. Um, maybe talk about the gun now. Or should I say, up my dress? <gasps> uh huh. Well, what are you? He jerks his head around to avoid looking. No, look. I tap on the matter of the gun on my leg hole am I in my leg holster? Oh. Yep, what do you say? Very well. But I'm pulling you out of the first sign of trouble. Awesome. The plan is a go. Now let's talk logistics. Alright, first thing first, this thing we are doing, I'll have to explain it to the rest of the crew. They know about Hetty, so it will be crazy if they see her showing out showing up out of the blue. Of course, but you might want to uh, hmm, leave out a few details. Ah, yes, I will just tell them it's my idea to get someone to play her until the show uh, until the shows are finished. The switcheroo. I'm going to take Hattie's place by impersonating her. This will placate circus customers angry over Hattie's disappearance and hopefully draw the person behind Hattie's death. Moses will tell the performers that it was his idea to hire me. Hello, dear Lasse. Good evening to you. Uh, what are we gaming today? We are being a detective today and we're going to figure out who the hell killed Hattie here. And it happened in the circus and we're going to, yeah, hopefully going to find the culprit here. So uh, we'll see if I'm going to be a true detective. <laughs> I hope so. Second, I think you might pass as her from afar, but you are going to need everything on your side for everyone to believe it, especially with all the scrutiny you're going to be going to be under. It will help you if you are in something if you are in something familiar. You'll need to change into her costume. I was going to ask you about that. You need to go find Alice or mechanic. Your mechanic? Yes, Alice is in change of a uh, charge of a stage of our stage props and costumes. She also helps with pretty much everything that has to do with show uh, show arrangements. She's the one uh, besides the performers who knows what happened to Hattie. I'm sorry, but I can't really leave the office. I am expecting someone important. I'll write you a note. She'll understand when she says it. And here's a map. This time of day, Alice is def definitely backstage at the little tent right behind the big top. Just introduce yourself and she'll help you with the costume and she'll tell you everything you need to know for your performance tonight. Well, I can do that. Get into the character. Moses reluctantly agreed to my proposal to let me masquerade as Hattie. But the show can't start until all the players get into costume. So the important task at hand, find the circus mechanic Alice in the backstage attend and put on Hattie's old costume. Your magician? Yes, we are going to be, uh, we're going to take the role of Hattie. She is uh, a magician here or she was a magician and we are going to pretend that we are Hattie here with a, uh, yeah, finding a mask and yeah, we're going to masquerade as Hattie. A detective is at, at an important airport waiting to board his plane. While waiting for the plane, he spills his coffee, seemingly ignoring the mess he has made. A fellow messenger, a passenger asks him why he didn't taking a towel from his briefcase and cleaning up the mess he made. The detective having a lock on his travel bag says, the case is closed. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> now, last thing. What's, uh, what's the last thing? It is absolutely imperative that you don't go wandering around in the public areas before you're formally introduced to the audience got it can't spoil the surprise right we are walking a tight rope here we can't let anyone spot you in an uncontrolled environment of course is that all yes get into costume don't let the public spot you and remember that the performers know about the ruse if we can manage to do all of that, maybe we'll pull off this crazy plan of yours. You're a great magician in your own way. I'll take that as a compliment. Rightly so. All right, unless you have anything else to ask me, you need to be on your way. It's actually so cool and well made. <laughs> 
All right, we got our action points back. Five of five. And uh, this is detective. Uh, my head hurts. Where am I? All right. Oh, did you see that in the background? It was blurry and now we can see clearly. All right. Think, Mimi, think. Someone clearly did this to me. I need to find them and do something. Find my attacker. I woke up next to the train station by the circus, missing my clothes and some of my recent memories. Seems like someone whacked me over the head hard enough to knock me out. Who did it? Why take all of my belongings? Does this have anything to do with the case I'm investigating? I need to find the answers to these questions. I think we're having, uh, we're taking different perspectives now. It's already starting. I need to figure out where I am and how I got here. But first things first, I'm going to need, I'm going to need some pants. <laughs> oh, oh, they literally just ripped off everything? Really? Did they have to take my clothes too? Or was it working again? Oh, okay. <laughs> Shit, I can't remember. That's not good. Why can't I remember? Do I have a concussion? I'm sure whatever I was wearing wasn't worth much. Whoever took them must be desperate. Huh. Robbery victim. I woke up in a corner behind the trains without my money or my clothes, but with some fresh head trauma. I think I was knocked out by a robber looking to make some extra cash. With my clothes? Okay, fine, we'll deal with that later. At least this guy left me with my undershirt and shorts. And a smidge of dignity. <laughs> oh well. I get up from the ground slowly, cradling my aching hat. As I rise, something small falls to the ground. A bobby pen? Must have fallen out of my pocket when they took over my jacket. Took off my jacket. What is a bobby pin? Ah, oh, this one. <laughs> huh. A tiny double-pronged hairpin. Useful if for holding long hair in place or for a detective's ins inconspicuous lockpick. These were in short supply during the war due to metal rationing efforts. Interesting. Now fully awake, I stand awkwardly in my undergarments in an unfamiliar place. Oh, this is Telgi. I take a peek around the corner. Not many people are around. I step out from behind the train cars and get the lay of the land. Huh. Have a feeling I'm not in San Francisco anymore. Okay, now I'm very curious. Is this city really existing? I'm opening Google Maps now. I want to see if the city is existing or not. Not Telgi. Uh, Telgi. It is existing. <laughs> and th there are quite a few uh, in the USA. So it is uh, not a fake city, not a fake town. Interesting. I'm not in San Francisco anymore. Of all places, why a circus? I look around to see if anyone's around to give me some much needed information. Unfortunately, only the chilly autumn air fills the field. But I spot something in the distance. A payphone next to the train station. Right, I can call Ruth. Hopefully she can tell me something about whatever case I was working on. I rub my arms for some heat and head to the phone booth. Is it really that cold or is it just me feeling naked? I think it's because we don't have much clothes on. I duck into the phone booth and close the door. Let's hope Ruth has some good news for me. At least tell me I have a hotel room nearby with some clothes or something. Shit, I'm an idiot. Of course I don't have a sand on me. <sighs> shit, shit, shit. No one around to help either. Maybe I'll get lucky and somebody forgot to collect their change. <sighs> no dice. Oh, that was nice with the sound effect. Okay, only one way left then. If I can grant the transmitter, the circuit will work as if I coin pass through it. Ah, I'm a cheetah. <laughs> I'm swearing again, Pena. Is it still weird uh, hearing me swearing? <laughs> I need something small and metal. Ah, all right, let's see. About Detective Jones. I, Detective Jones, am I private investigator. My office, Jones Investigative Services, is based in San Francisco, but I'll take cases from all across the country for the right price, of course. 
and we're a robbery victim. I woke up in a corner behind the chains without my money or my clothes, but uh, with some fresh head trauma. I think I was knocked out by a robber looking to make some extra cash. And most likely we need to use this bobby pin here. A tiny double pronged, we already read this one, and we don't have anything else. So let's take the bobby pin. But not gonna, I can imagine, because I always want to have it family friendly. It doesn't bother me, but I'm not used to hearing you Yeah, I can imagine. I'm also not used to, to use these words on stream. It's also weird for me when I'm speaking a German. So that's also a bit weird. <laughs> All right, let's take the bobby pin. A word I've learned today. Is it gonna work? It must. It needs to work. Uh huh, short cutting. Dealing. Tiling. <laughs> what city, please? What city, please? Uh, San Francisco, California, please. The number for Jones Investigative Services, G O N E S, on Market Street. Checking out the Jones Investigative Services, G-O-N-E-S, on Market Street. Got it. Um, uh, got it. Patching it through. Hello, Jones Investigative Service. How can I help you? Um, probably we should talk about ourselves, right? Ruth, it's me. Mr. J, you finally made it to Tolgi? What took you so long? I thought you were supposed to be there yesterday. Um... Don't tell me you pulled into some weird shenanigans again. This time it's not my fault. I think... What do you mean you think? Well, now we need to talk about the robbery victim, right? Good evening, dear dudes. Hello, hello. Happy Sunday to you. I hope uh, you're doing well. Welcome, welcome. Um... Remember that time in Providence? You got drugged again? I thought you promised to be careful with that sort of thing. What business did you poke your nose into this time? It is even related to this case. No, no, I didn't get drugged again. That's ridiculous. I know better now. This time they just did it the good old fashioned way by whacking me over the head. Really hard, I think. Ouch. So, uh, kind of uh, lost memory of a few things. I see, like Providence, huh? Well, at least... Uh, well, at least you remember your name and this number. That's something. Yeah, that's something. Anyways, what's the situation over there? You okay? Do you need me to call someone to help? No, no, I I'm fine. I mean, I need to find something to wear and fast. It's kind of getting cold out here. I think whoever hit me took my wallet too, unless I didn't have it with me, which seems unlikely. And my head kind of hurts. I think it might be concussion. Can't be sure. I don't remember where I was staying. And if I had need, if I need money to get there, then I'm kind of fucked. <gasps> I kind of made this call illegally too, but it's just two cents. I'm sure the payphone company can survive it. So yeah. But other than that, I'm great. Sounds like quite a day. The last thing I remember was when I was in San Francisco. I'm definitely missing a few days. I'm gonna need some ketchup if you don't mind. Mr. J, with the amount of time your brain gets tossed around in your skull, it's a wonder you have enough mind left to be a detective. Well, that's why I'm the best person for the job. Keep telling yourself that. Anyway, I see mommy here for a job, right? I remember something about a call from, from the Telgi that was like four or five days ago. Seriously? Whoever knocked you out must have gotten a good hit. I think I know the basics. I can give you a basic rundown of the case. About the client, about the case. Let's start with the case. Or the client. Who's the client? Our client is Moses Morgan, the owner of Morgan Traveling Circus. Anything else we know about Mr. Morgan? Not much. He isn't the usual PT, born up type. From what I could gather, he's not really one of the spotlight. But he seems to have a good rep in the business, popular in the industry. No major complaints against him. Which could either be a very good sign or a very bad sign. Well, I guess you'll find that out for yourself. And about the case? What happened at the circus? Their magician, the amazing Hattie, is missing. Since when? Since Monday, almost a week now. 
Why didn't they call the police? So the magician has been missing for almost a week. Why haven't they called the police? From what I understand, they did. Then why are they calling me? You will have to ask the client that. Okay, I guess I'll need to talk to the client as soon as possible. Or maybe I already did? What a thought. I can't wait. I, I can't... I can't... Uh, well? I can't well go... S I can't wait. Go, go see him dressed like that. Uh, please tell me now where I am supposed to be staying. Who do you think books all your rooms? Your motel is at Sherba Road, right next to the circus. Shouldn't be any trouble finding it. All right, that's the plan then. Motel, get dressed, meet the circus boss. Talk to the client. Mr. Client is Moses Morgan, the owner of Morgan Shoveling Circus. He hired me to investigate the disappearance of his star magician. I need to talk to him, but I need to look presentable first. Hopefully I can find some suitable clothes, clothing back, back at my motel room. I'll get on it. Thanks, Ruth. I'll see you when I get back to San Francisco. And say hi to Steve for me. Don't let him steal too many sandwiches. Be careful. Wait until your mother hears about this, young man. I was hoping to avoid that. You should better buy now. That woman knows everything. At least hold off on tattling to her until I get the chance to do it myself, please. You are the boss. Wait, one more thing before you go. What? Be careful doing your detective thing at the circus. Yeah, yeah, we already co covered that. My head will remain intact for the rest of this investigation, I promise. I don't mean be careful with yourself. That's a lost cause at this point. I meant be careful with the circus people. What do you mean? Look, I had a cousin who was at the circus back in the day. The Cardis, it almost like they have their own little secret society. They are insanely protective against those any anyone they view as an outsider. They'll cooperate if forced, but they'll never find to tell you anything useful if they don't trust or at least respect you. So don't go all the way in your dirk. You are thing. What thing? I don't have a thing. Just don't be so... Phew, it might make them anxious. <laughs> what does that mean exactly? I can hear her aside to the phone. <sighs> You look like someone who wants to make mass arrests. But I'm not a cop. Just be more gentle than usual, okay? Try getting them to trust you. Easier said than done. I know. Circus secrets. Psh, chat. <laughs> Ruth told me that carnies are notoriously wary towards people they view as outsiders. They could make my investigation difficult. Huh. Didn't mention, uh, mention it yet, but the art still is nice in this game. Yeah, I also like it a lot. This is why I was uh, catching my interest. And also because of visual now. It's been a while playing them. For next year, I sent you on Steam what... Uh, oh, the, the recipe. Yeah, do that. Thank you, Teddy. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> I'll check it out. I need to, I need to uh, see uh, some pictures of that. Never mind, I'm sure it will all work as uh, out as usual. Although I have no idea how it's you keep pulling it off. Anything else, boss? Nope. You better go that lots of work, lots of work to do. Sometimes I think she only calls me boss to humor me. <laughs> I steady myself and open the payphone door again. I peek my head out to see if, anyone, if, if anyone's around. But this time, I catch a glimpse of someone, and they're holding something awfully familiar. That looks like a lot my wallet. And the stranger, the robber, probably is... rifling through it? I approach quietly, formulating a plan in my head. He's about six feet four, with wide shoulders and arms like cannon barrels. I would have jumped on him, to be honest. I said it wrong, it's spelled like this. Offer... Olo much a curd cheese? I need to check this out, Teddy. Thank you, though. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Enjoy your food. As I move closer, it feels like this his frame is blotting out the sun. No wonder he managed to knock me out. I'm not so egoistic, egotistic, ego, egotistical as to think I could possibly beat him in a fair fight. 
And since I don't have any weapons or allies nearby, I only have a few options. Confronted with a writer's anger, snatch the wallet out of the sand and run, try to negotiate. I would have done this in real life, but I don't know what's better in game. I don't know about the consequences. What would you do, Chad? I'm curious. So somebody is stealing your wallet and you're seeing that person here again. What would you do? Huh? I actually have no idea. You know, welcome back, Jan. I think I would confront him with a right to singer. But probably not snatch and run. Try to negotiate. There's nothing to negotiate. I'm just I'm just gonna confront him with a right to singer. Hey! The figure run turns around with wide eyes, still holding my wallet open with a single finger. Um can I help you with anything? Oh, this is Rolf. Does it slap him? I don't think this is a good solution, though. But we want to have our wallet back, right? Despite his imposing state here, he's obviously quite young. Probably in his early 20s. He takes one look at me and suddenly seems nervous. Like he doesn't quite know where to put his hand or his eyes. As he's new to the robbery and assault games, maybe I can talk some sense into him. Maybe he didn't steal my stuff. Maybe he found my stuff. And now maybe it's empty. I put on my best stern senior face. You can help me by giving me that. Uh, sorry? I can't just give it to you. And I don't mean to be rude, but maybe you should cover up? This is a family event. In my writer's anger, I completely forgot that I'm currently in my underwear. There goes my plan of looking stern and authoritative. Mm-hmm. Do not play dumb with me, young man. You are the one who to blame for my current situation. Speaking of which, where did he dump my clothes? No chance we wear the same size. Is he planning to pawn them off? What are you talking about? Give me my wallet! Now! Oh, you mean this is your wallet? I think you know this is my wallet. How would I know? I was trying to check, but there aren't any photos inside. Wait a minute. So you didn't take it from me? I knew it. Because, you know, it's crazy. Because I also found a wallet once, but it was in it was completely empty. Uh, all I could do was just, I went to the next police station. I And I, yeah, well, I gave everything to the police. And they were also asking me, like, wasn't there anything inside? And I said, no. It was, and then I figured, oh, yeah, I, I could have been the one who just yoinked everything and now bringing the rest back or what. I didn't even think about that. He takes a step back, both of his arms flailing to deny it. No, 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 no. I just found it on the ground, just outside of the train car over there. I was trying to figure out its owner. Uh, that makes a lot of sense, actually. Oh, oh. I'm so sorry for the misunderstanding. He scratches his head and laughs it off. <laughs> hey, don't worry about that. I'm sorry. What happened to you? I think someone knocked me out and took all of my stuff. So when I woke up and saw you holding my wallet, well, in my defense, my head is still fuzzy. Probably a concussion. Are you sure this is your wallet? You checked inside, right? It's probably It probably has my business card on it. Jones Investigative Services. He looks again and pulls out the card. When a mystery surfaces, call Jones Investigative Services. <laughs> All right, that's uh, that's a good one. <laughs> ah, we really need a new slogan. <laughs> and over there in the pocket, there should be a photo of my cat. that says thief on. Oh, thief is his cat. Oh, that's cute. Someone actually carrying a picture of their cat. That's actually very sweet. B a very big plus. No, <laughs> this is thief. Why does it say thief? That's his name. My friend found it hilarious because I'm a detective. He looks at the photo and smiles. Oh, little guy. His gaze lingers on the photo for a few seconds before putting everything back in its place and handing the wallet back to me. Well, sorry about that. Here you go. I look inside the wallet. There is the name card, the photo, and surprisingly, about $20 in cash with a few quarters to put. $20 in 1952? That's actually a lot. That's... 
Not a small amount of money, probably a week worth of salaries for an average worker. Leather wallet. It's old and beaten down, but it's mine. Inside there is a photo of my cat thief and a business card for my office, Jones Investigative Services. I got it back with a little more than $20 inside. There's still 20 bucks in here. Yeah, you said you were robbed? Something doesn't make sense here. Occasionally you may realize information you have doesn't end up. Someone might be lying or you might be making the wrong assumptions. Shoot. That's where Contradicts comes in. L click on the labels at the top or, or use LT and RT to switch between present and Contradicts. Choose two items from your collection that contradict each other to point out the logical inconsistency and get to the bottom of the question. Interesting. One more note, you will still be presenting contradictions to people. Note who you are talking to. If they know nothing about what you are talking about, then the contradiction won't matter to them. With contradiction hints turned on whenever a contradiction is available with the current NPC, the exclamation point will shake here to let you know. But I think you can also turn it off if you want to. If you don't think you need the help, you can turn off contradiction hint in the settings on the basic. You can open settings by hitting escape or the menu button on the controller. You can also click on the gear button that appears when you hover your mouse over the top right corner. Yeah. <laughs> Now, what two pieces of information or evidence do not add up here? Try using contradict in your collection to uh, point them out. So, um, yeah, let's do that. So, um, we have our le leather, leather, <laughs> leather wallet and um, robbery victim. Can I do this? And then can I do this? This is not going to fit, right? Contradiction. A robber looking for money definitely wouldn't have left money than $20 of cash in my wallet. I thought whoever robbed me must have been looking for money. But there is still cash in my wallet. That would be the first thing they take. Perhaps they didn't see the wallet fall to the ground and that's why they took my clothes. They didn't find any money so they took whatever they could. Huh. You said you found it by the train? Yeah. It was uh, sitting out in the open. I don't think they could have missed it if they were looking for it. I'm surprised someone else didn't grab it before I did. Luckily, not a lot of customers come around here. Uh, this game is interesting. Yeah, it's super interesting. It's um, a detective game uh, with uh, some, yeah, in a visual novel style. It's pretty good, actually. Interesting. Guess it might not be about the money then. I should correct my previous theory. I woke up next to the train station by the circus missing my clothes and some of my recent memories. Seems like someone whacked me where they had to knock me out and took all of my stuff. But not for my wallet, which still had money inside. What were they trying to do? Let's say this wasn't about the money. Then why attack me? Maybe they were just trying to embarrass you. Like a prank? Well, mission accomplished. Can you think of anyone who might have it out for you? Funny, that's uh, usually my line. <laughs> Right, you're a detective. You can solve the case yourself, right? Perhaps. My enemies are too numerous to count, but I don't think they'd let me off this easy. You call this easy? <laughs> I'm still alive and have all my limbs, so yes, this is easy by their standards. It's almost like they weren't targeting me personally. Maybe they were trying to take some evidence rather than cash. I'm growing more and more curious about this case at the circus. And speaking of the circus, there is one more thing I wanted to ask you. You work here, right? Uh, yes. How did you... Well, the clothes and the sc scars. At first, I thought you'd just been in a lot of knife fights due to me suspecting you were of assault and theft. But once I realized that wasn't the case, y you also said not a lot of customers come around here, which implies you are on the other side of that equation. A massive circus worker with a lot of scars from cuts or slashes? You're the animal trainer. Brilliant. Is that what detectives do? Don't give me too much credit considering how wrong my first guess was. Sorry for the whole assuming you're a criminal thing, by the way. Chalk it up to, up to the concussion. Oh, by the way, my name's Rolf. Our circus is called Morgan's Traveling Circus. <laughs> to the evidence tense. <laughs> 
<laughs> Rolf. Rolf is uh, the animal trainer at a Morgan's Traveling Circus. Looks like this won't be the last time I see of Rolf. Nice to meet you, Rolf. And you've uh, seen my card. I'm a detective. People usually just call me Jones. Your boss must be Mo Mo Moses Morgan, right? Yeah, I guess you've heard of him. Well, you could say that. He's my client, actually. He hired a detective? Oh, are you here about Hattie? I believe I am. Oh, oh, wait. What if whoever attacked you is? It's a possibility, but I think I've leaped to enough conclusions today. All right, this is all such a mess. Well, if you're looking for a boss, he's always in his office. It's the small square tent over there by the other end of the, the train car. But you should probably put on some clothes first. Do you have anything anything to wear? Uh, it'll be fine. I have uh, a motor room nearby with some of my luggage and things to you. I have my wallet back so I can get some clothes for my, my for myself if I need to. Um, is this game German? I'm not quite sure. Probably not. Uh, I mean, you can check it out. It's developed by Misty Mountain Studio. Um, I'm not sure if they are German. Maybe. Sounds good. Let me know if you need anything. He hesitates before quietly making his next uh, offer. I need to go, but you can come talk to me later if you want. You can find me in the big top at 1 p.m. or fair at 2 p.m. Or oh, do I need to... R I should probably write this down, right? I'm gonna quickly write this down. As Since we're also checking this out, this game has 32 achievements. So not too bad. Uh, Rolf, I'm just gonna write this down in case there is no information. Um, I can fast get, fastly get, top, a uh, big top, at 1 p.m. or, oopsie, I just tapped out, or fair, um, at, what was it, 2 p.m. All right, I have show schedule done, interesting. I will likely take you up on that, thanks for the help, really, I appreciate it. I bid Rolf goodbye and turn around. This is going to be a fun walk. What was the address Ruth gave me again? Schumer Road? <laughs> Actually forgot. Time is passing by. On my phone right now. <laughs> Same, because I can't tap out and just quickly check it out. <laughs> Catching. We're back again. Okay. Moses asked me to go find Alice backstage, but it's very, very important that we're going backstage first. We need the costume first because if people are going to see us that we are an imposter, then we're pro probably screwed. So uh, that first thing is getting the masquerade. What did he say again? The small tent behind the big top. A small tent. Uh, ah, so I guess uh, we're going... Oh, this is so cool. So stable, office, fortune teller and the fair. Actually, very, very cool. There are elephants here, dude. And there's also a collection here, the switcheroo. I'm going to take Hattie's place by impersonating her. This will uh, placate circus customers angry over Hattie's disappearance and hopefully draw the person behind Hattie's death. Moses will tell the performers that it was his idea to hire me. Oh, yeah, all right. I'll just lower. I'm going to go to bed. I'm going to listen and I hope uh, the bad guys get going to get caught soon. I hope so as well. Thank you, dear Teddy. Thank you so much for the lurk. I appreciate that. Have a good night and have a great start to the new week. Yeah, please take care. Backstage is actually just a small tent behind the main performance tent. I slip in from the back and pull the curtain. It's not exactly tidy, but it's significantly cleaner than I expected. A splash of loud colors compete for attention, from outlandish costumes to widely patterned fabrics. That's cool with the light here. Also, this is also moving a tiny bit. I really like the vibes here. It's really ni nice. Various fantastical stage props are piled around the small room, making it look like some sort of fairy tale storage facility. I clear my throat. <coughs> A tiny girl, a young woman, pops out of from behind one of the big boards. A string of soft clinking and clattering follows her movements as tools rattle around in her pockets. She eyes me up and down, obviously wondering if I'm supposed to be here, but decides against speaking first. You must be Alice, 
she nods once. Alice. Alice is the mechanic at Morgan's Traveling Circus. I like the hair color, that's cool. Great, I am Jackie. Great, I'm Jackie. What are you doing here? Um, inquire about Hattie. Get into it. Wait a second. I need to check this out. So, uh, get into the character. Put on Hattie's costume. is going to give us some XP. Uh, Moses reluctantly agreed to my proposal to let me masquerade as Hattie, but she, she... But the show can't start until all players get into costume. So the important task at hand. Find the circus mechanic. Alice in the backstage stand and put on Hattie's old costume. I need to talk everyone in the circus and inquire about Hattie. All right, let's talk about that. Let's talk about he Hattie. Let's talk about the letter. Maybe she heard anything of that. No, this would reveal everything to the potential killer. Oh, okay. There are all suspects for now. I have to be a little more sure before showing this to anyone else in the circus. All right. Uh, the situation in the circus, the the disappearance. As I speak, I can feel we're getting more anxious. Taking glances towards uh, the door. Uh huh. Sorry, just. This is for circus staff only. You don't have permission to be here. I need you to leave. Right, I should probably tell her about my plan with Moses first. Um, the switcheroo. Mr. Morgan asked me to come here. Here, he wrote this note. He said, You'll understand. I hand her the note. She scans it quickly, shakes off her disbelief, then parses it again. I'm surprised that the paper isn't bursting into flames from the intensity of her stare. Is... is everything okay? Huh. Is everything okay? Ah, uh, yeah, yes. It's okay, I guess. She stares at the ground in stunned silence. I just can't believe... What is he thinking? Dressing someone up as her? He didn't even tell us about this. Do you think it's unethical? I'm sure he has his reasons. Sorry, this must be weird for you. Huh. Do you think it's unethical? Do you think it's wrong? Moses wants me to help with a costume. She looks me up and, and down. I think you'll fit in our old g oh, in our old one. Can I take some measurements? Um, sure. I'm still stuck on the awkwardness of the conversation we were having. But once word came up, she forgot all about any discomfort and began moving with purpose. Before I can fully respond, she's already rummaging through the, her little pouch and pulling out a tape measure. Can you stand with your back to uh, the shelf over there? Uh, I need to see how tall you are. Hi, Zonic. Hi, hi. Any mass investigators in chat? I hope so. I can, I'm going to try to be a true detective. Hi, dear Zonic. Happy Sunday to you. She charges towards the corner with a large shelf and clears a place to stand. Yeah, let me just move. Uh, the eye out of the way. You can stand here on the right side. Back straight, please. Yeah, like that. I put my back to the shelf as the pins one side of the tape measure under the bottom and stretches it to the top of my head. With her short stator, she has to resort to getting on the stairs next to us to read the results. Looks like you're right around 5'8". Hattie was 5'6". I could have told you that. My height, I mean... Sorry, I just like to measure things myself. Yeah, especially when you're the costume designer. Now, we of this game before. Um, it's, um, it's a detective game with um, lots of visual novel inside. And a great art style, actually. Really, really good. I en I'm enjoying myself a lot. She snaps the tape measure back and pulls out a soft tailor's tape from a pouch. Wrapping it around my shoulder and waist. Hold your arms straight out to the sides. The tape measure in her hand, a number is scribbled on her notebook. She knows she know looks comfortable and self assured. She's in her zone. I'm sorry if you are getting attacked on Discord, by the way, because of the disconnect. So, um, yeah, I'm sorry about that. I cannot, uh, I cannot influence this one. I'm sorry about the the second tag. All right, I'm done now. 
I'll let out the breath I've been holding <laughs> and relax my hands. She's jotting down something quickly on her notepad while clearly forming a plan in her head. I think we can get away with doing a few adjustments on her, um, on the costume we already have. So your shoulders are a little wider, but nothing to worry about. I can do a couple of things to give you some breathing space. What's a shoe size? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure. How can you be not sure? Aren't measurements in the States different? Oh yeah, we're coming from Europe, of course. It's a bit different. Even the UK um, measurements are different than the ones in the rest of Europe. It's all right. We all love getting notifications on Discord. Mm, we all love getting pings. <laughs> right, you were in Europe. She ducks into the pile of stuff on the other side of the room and emerges with a pair of purple high heels. Oof. How is this for you? I sit down on the stairs and try squeezing my food in. My toes are screaming. I feel like one of the Cinderella's evil stepsisters. <laughs> yeah, you probably don't need the heels given your extra height. Let me see. She scans the room and releases a little ha when she finds a pair of black knee high boots from the far corner. I think these were chips, actually, but he's a short guy. Try them on. Let me know if you are if they are too large. I can add insoles or stuff uh, stuff them. I slip them on, paint free. Ah, oh, thank you, much better. But the color doesn't go with the costume. Black goes with everything. Mm, wait, I think I have some of the dress fabric left. I sit there while Alice works her magic on the dress and the boots. I stare dumbly while she pulls out a pair of scissors from her tool belt and goes to work. So cool. First, she carefully removes the zipper from the back of the dress, hidden under the truffle, and replaces it with a ribbon lacing to give it more. By the way, I was thinking the whole time the music was reminding me of another game. And now I got it. It's Professor Layton. I love that series so much. And also reminded me of the, a bit of that game. Next, she cuts long straps of the purple fabric and delicately wraps around the boots. Then she pulls out her glue. Noticing me staring, she looks a bit embarrassed. I know it looks silly, but glue really works in a pinch. Of course she's right. With just a few touches of the glue, the fabric adorns the boot like it was always a part of her costume. All right, can you try these on and let me know how they fit? In a blink of an eye, she lays out the dress, the boots, a pair of gloves, and a top hat all on the sofa. Like here? Where else? We're backstage. Oh, you mean like in front of me? Uh, sorry, we don't have a changing room or anything. Uh, look away if you want. Uh, I'm just going to change behind that big cardboard, okay? We cannot change our clothes in front of her because we got a gun on our thighs. Mm-hmm. I duck behind the little board. I have to crouch to fit myself behind it, which is not the easiest position to be in when putting on a dress. Do you um, need help? You know, with the lacing or something? No, 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 we're good. Now you said it, if 1% sounds like Layton, I love that. It's really good. Helps with the, mm, with the environment to immerse yourself a bit better. She's clearly not keen on helping, but probably feels compelled to ask out of obligation. No, 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 I'm, I'm good. Almost done. Whether some awkward shuffling, I'm pretty sure I've finally got everything on. I'm just not sure I could get out of it without some significant wiggling. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Okay, I'm done. Alice scans me up and down. Her eyes are on me, but they are a thousand miles away. Alice? Uh, uh, yes, sorry. Everything fits? Everything, uh... Everything's fine. Great, actually. That's it then, I think. Do you want to take a look? She gestures to the makeup mirror as a peek. Hmm. Actually, what a nice dress. Hi there, Kev. <laughs> hello, hello. How are you doing? Whoa. Looks. I know, I know. We all uh, we got our task complete. So I'd be keeping this for the big show tonight. Sure. 
Hat is costume. A magician's get up complete with a top hat and gloves. The outfit is pretty modest by circus standards, but the ruffles and colors are still rather flattering. Just need to not think too much about the fact that I am technically wearing a dead person's clothes. You try not to think about that. Oh, that reminds me. We should talk a little bit about show arrangements. The big show starts at 7 p.m. every night and goes until 10. Usually the bring master does a routine to introduce all the performers up front. All right, I'm going to write this down quickly. Um, big show. Oh, oopsie. Big show. I don't know if it's relevant. I'm just going to do it. Uh, starts at 7 p.m. Uh, let's, let's do it this way. 7 p.m to 10 p.m. But since your appearance is supposed to be a surprise, I think it'll be better for you to only to do the closing act from 9 to 10. Uh, well, but for me, it's 9 to 10 p.m. Come back here at 8 so we can go over some last minute arrangements. Come, <laughs> come back at 8 p.m. to Alice. Surprise appearance. As Hadi, I need to pull off a surprise appearance and closing performance by the big show. Alice, the circus mechanic, suggests I should check in with her at backstage, uh, backstage at 8 p.m. to go over some final arrangements. Everyone will be in the big tub watching the show, so you won't need to worry about someone need seeing you. What set are you planning to do tonight? Do you need anything for props? I'm still trying to figure out <laughs> all that out. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions? What does that have to do with your performance? Well, I'm new here and the boss is busy, so he didn't tell me how much uh, much about everything that's going on. Mm -hmm. I'm good. Was bouldering again to today. Also, seven minute plank this time. Nice, you're getting better. Very nice, Cap. And I think bouldering is also helping with that. I can't decide on what to do if I don't have the full picture of the circus and what the audience will expe expect. I don't think that's how it works. Come on, we'll just chat a little bit like friends, unless you're busy. I can come back later. No, it's fine. I need to I need to help with something at 11, but I have some time, I guess. Oh, thank you so much, Jiri. You're a sweetheart. Oh, what? You? Is that French? Ah, never mind. I don't even want to ask. What did you want to talk about? Time doesn't wait for anyone. In one time block, you only have limited number of chances to take action. This measured by action points, uh, you can see how many are remaining on the top left. Performing actions such as using the collection to inquire or contradicts will cost AP, so think strategically about what you want to spend your AP on. The time block will end automatically when you run out of AP, so don't forget to keep an eye on them. Oh boy. So uh, we got Hattie's costume now. Magicians get up, complete with a top hat and gloves. Uh, the outfit is pretty modest by circus standards, but the rules... No. But the ruffles and the colors are so rather flattering. I just need to not think too much about the fact that I am technically wearing a dead person's clothes. All right. Um, we, hmm, what should we talk about then? The situation about the... Didn't we do that? About Jackie. Da, 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 da. Maybe about this one. You want to know what I do? Uh, sure. I do your usual stuff, rabbits and hats, card tricks, escape acts, that sort of thing. But my specialty is in mind reading. She pauses and then gives me a slow smile. A telepath? In the flesh. No, you are not. She says it in almost out of reflex and she seems to be embarrassed by her frankness. Sorry, just, uh, I don't believe in that stuff. Of course you are a mechanic, right? You must have been part of plenty of magic tricks. I imagine once you know how it's done, it will never feel as magical again. Actually, I think it only gets more magical. The majority of the audience knows it not, it's not real magic, they can't do with a wand or a spell, but they still get so drawn into it. It's almost like, for the few hours of the performance, we all enter into this world, this bubble all together, look at everything as if they were magic. For a moment, we all choose to forget about what is possible and choose to believe in the extraordinary. And in that moment, magic is real. As real as the tent and the popcorn, maybe even more real. Wow. <laughs> that was beautiful. I'm sorry for being cynical. Hey, maybe you'll make a better magician than me. She gives me an indes 
Superable look and uh, shakes her head. Uh, then uh, maybe the situation. Did we talk about that? So the soul head situation seems to be the talk of the town, huh? I know, it's been crazy. So if you don't mind me asking, how has this been affecting the business? Are people really returning their tickets? I don't know, it's not for me to worry about, but this whole thing just feels so wrong. I remember a time when a circus coming to town would be front page news. People would drive for hours and contract votes just to come see the performance. Kids would try to sneak in or do all kinds of odd jobs with them just for a free ticket. And then we'd go see the acrobats and the animals who run to the front row and reach your hands out. You could touch the horses and elephants. It was magical. But it seems like people are just less impressed with what we do these days, you know? It seems like they're expecting people to shut out of cannons or birds that will turn into snakes or something. It always needs to get be more spectacular. I don't know, maybe... I'm being too cynical, it just seems like they don't really understand what the circus is about. And this is in the year 1952, by the way. And I think circus are not really existing nowadays, except, uh, except Cirque du Soleil. So yeah. I don't really know about the number stuff, but the boss doesn't seem to be worried about it, so I guess it's fine. I don't really care if it makes a ton of money or just enough, as long as we can keep going. I'll be here. Hmm. That's good. About Jackie then? I mean, I'm missing the the check mark, so I'm just gonna do it again. Oh no, this is something else. Sorry, I didn't really introduce myself, did I? You told me your name. And you are a magician, of course, since you need to do Hattie's job. Of course, yeah, of course. But I've never heard of a magician by the name of Jackie. <laughs> I didn't even know there was another practicing female magician besides Hattie. Ah, well, I wasn't on the side of the ocean, so I doubt you'd have uh, heard of me. I was in Europe before, studying with my mentor. Your mentor? Have I heard of them? I doubt it. Neither of us was exactly the amazing head, you know? What's his name? Or her name? Um, his name is Rupert. Rupert the Root. Have you heard of him? No, what sort of name is that? Did they really call him that? Well, you know, Europeans are weird, eh? Hey. I've never been to Europe, so I'll have to take your word for it. Huh. We have one AP left. Um, oh, we can also talk about other people, right? Hattie? Moses? Actually, talk, let's talk about Hattie. So what was Hattie like? I figured since I'm going to be her, I better know a bit more about her, right? She closes her eyes and turns away, hands still clutching the strap of her back. I... I don't know what to say. Come on, you worked together for years. Judging by your early reactions, I'd figure you cared a great, a great deal about her, right? No. Yes, uh, I'm just... We're colleagues. I only cared about her. She finally looks back at me in the eyes. It just... No one could ever imagine something like this happened to her. Almost as if she's afraid I was going to open my mouth and ask more. She moves on to the next topic. Um, sorry, so... Hattie, she was a really good magician. Wish you could have seen her perform. Uh, perform. The crowd loved her. She was a true star. That's why they were mad she isn't here. Well, that's uh, what I'm here for. Her eyes snap up and she bites her lips, suddenly looking infuriated. No, you're not. Listen, <sighs> you're not gonna understand. Hattie is... was irreplaceable. You can't take her place, not with the dress or the hat or whatever. Whoa, whoa. That's going a bit too far, don't you think? What would Hattie say to that? She lowers her eyes, but her eyes remain fury and stubborn. She would have agreed. Are you sure about that? Her teeth clench. You don't know, Hattie. You don't do her tricks. You're here only because she's gone. I knew Hattie, actually. What? I knew Hattie before all of this, but I've never heard her mention. It's not important though. You're right. I can never become Hattie. I'm not her. Sorry. I'm sorry. It's not... I don't mean it as anything against you. I'm just having a hard time with... 
I just don't think anyone can take our place or just or that anyone should. Irreplaceable. Alice says Hattie's position as the star magician of Morgan's traveling circus is irreplaceable and that she doesn't think anyone can or should take her place. She insists that Hattie would have agreed with her. That is a that's a very, very strong opinion actually. She shakes her hand. Never mind. It's silly. Sorry if I was I don't mean to offend you. No, I apologize, I overreacted. End of turn! She looks away for a second. A silence hangs between us. I feel like we missed one quest. I can tell she's getting a bit overtired with these questions. Sorry, I, I don't mean to keep you. Did you say you had something to do? She takes a discreet little sigh of relief and replies with more spirit. Look, this has been... I hope... Uh, I, I help, but I really gotta go. There's a puppet performance at the field for the next hour and I need to go find Echo and check if the Calliope is working. I should be done in an hour or so. If you have any other questions or anything else you need, come back and find me then. Okay, thanks for everything. ka -ching. And I think now it's time as the detective, right? I make my way to the hotel trying my best not to draw attention to my attire. Luckily, it's a quick walk and I think everyone is too enthralled by the circus act to pay much attention to the homeless looking guy. The people at the motor recognize me. I tell them my key was stolen, so they provide me with a replacement after a small service fee, of course. With all the trouble and the humiliation and the physical peril, this job better pay like Rockefeller himself hired me. I open the door to my room. Everything seems undisturbed. I put on a change of clothes and look around the room. The key to any good detective work is observation. When you see the magnifying glass icon on the left side, it means you can enter investigation mode. It will cost you one action point to enter investigation mode, but once you start investigating, you can move your cursor around, look at everything in the scene. Oh, that's cool. All right. All notable items will be highlighted when you hover over them. Press the highlighted item to get a detailed description. Sometimes if something is particularly noteworthy, it might be added as an item into your collection. When you're done, click on the exit icon or press press left button on control again to leave investigation mode. All right. But I think I'm going to stop now. Uh, I'm going to save here. I think there is... Whoa, there is no auto save. Or am I doing this the first time now? Whoa, okay, that was very dangerous. <laughs> I will go back to the main title. Yes, uh, I am very sure. And I want to say to you, Burbles, thank you so, so much for trying out Death Trick Double Blind with me. Um, I would definitely recommend this game. It was very, very fun to try out the game. It is, I feel like it's more like a visual novel than a detective game, but I'm, I'm fine with that. Um, you are also getting different kind of mechanics. I'm, I'm, I'm very happy about the magnifying glass, actually. It reminds me so, so much of Professor, Professor Layton, which, uh, which is a good sign. So yeah, thank you so, so much for trying out Death Trick Double Blind with me. And in case you're watching this over YouTube, I would appreciate uh, a like and a subscribe because I still need them. <laughs> thank you very, very much. <laughs>